You both have really cool costumes. But yeah. the bottom half of you is, you know, <laughs> you know, we're CGI in there. What are you actually wearing on set? We're naked. <laughs> we're naked. We really, we, we made a pack. <laughs> <laughs> we did our Marlon Brando routine, which is being on, on, well, on our um, bathing suits. <laughs> so that won't be in the special features. No. God, let's hope not. Um, just like, I just wore like leggings and like, yeah. like little like stunt pads all over them because I was always sliding and flipping around. But this is, you did have these yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, everything from like the hips up was, was, was real. Neat. And I, I just like don't understand the movie magic of the underwater stuff. I know obviously when you're like on the surface, you've got to be in some kind of water, but yeah. when you're underwater, is there any, are you wet at all? What's happening? No. How, it's no. just all magic. And I've never seen anything look like that. Like I, I just, I can't process how technically impossible that seemed to be and how you never thought about, like just watching, you're like, of course I'm underwater. Like at one point I'm like, God, yeah. Holly's eyes it doesn't the water doesn't seem to bother her at all. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, you're nuts. You were there. But uh it's just I mean, every hair is digital, all the movement, you know, we each had what, like Absolutely. seven, eight people that were part of our team to help keep that kind of undulating. It took a lot of people to make it look so effortless. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. It worked. And I can't think of anything more fun in the world than playing a Disney villain. And you nailed one of my favorites. Me too. How, what was important for you? Like, what did you focus on? Was it the voice, the look, the song? How, as an actor, did you prepare for that? I think I prepared like I always do. I kind of just, kind of start to dissect them. And I, I've talked about it before. I, I think a lot about people's armor, and what you kind of put on as your facade, and what that really hides. And if you're, you know, Ursula, so she's such a great broad. And, you know, I was always like, in my heart, she always had a drink. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, all that, but what is it really hiding? And like, she's been isolated. She's terribly lonely. She wasn't allowed to have a family. She was rejected by her family. I think her mental health is not mm. good. Yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of, I mean, and come, going through the pandemic and being in lockdown, I think coming out of that, I was like, I think we all understand how we're not supposed to be solitary creatures yeah. and what that does to you. And suddenly she just really, I mean, I focused on all of it because once she became very real to me, like, I kind of can't do one without the other. Mm -hmm. It's not like the voice and the this anymore. It's just kind of like, it's Ursula. So sure. I don't know if that sounds crazy. No, I love that. That was a beautiful answer. <laughs> one of my favorite parts of the movie is when uh, you're talking to Sebastian about Ariel being in love. And I'm like, Javier Bardem is talking to a crab. This is why I love the movies. Like, this is beautiful. Yes. How, how for you is that? Is it, is it a challenge? Like, there's not a crab there, No, I but what made it happen very easily. Like, uh, Davey was on set. Oh, yeah? He was there mm -hmm. saying the lines with me. Oh, so. And, and, I, and they, they had different puppets and different puppeteers. And it will depend on on what's the size of the of the take of the shot, and they and they will put different Sebastians on my shoulder. Sometimes oh. it will be just two eyes, <laughs> <laughs> and they go like, "Oh my god!" But oh. it's also is the magic of, of mm -hmm. working in a movie like like this. Like you enjoy it for what it is. It's like, oh. but I will I will have uh, an an interaction with with Sebastian mm -hmm. because David was there. He will answer my. We'll do the. We'll play the dialogue as if we were shooting. I we don't were. think that's. So I don't fun. think you ever get to do that. No, yeah. I don't think so. No. And so one thing I loved about this that was different from the cartoon is we get a little more Triton Ursula backstory. Yeah. And my first thought was, I want that prequel. Mm -hmm. uh, like, give me that. Would you? Could you see yourselves playing these characters again? Oh my! God, <laughs> yes. What a crazy question. <laughs> Today, the softball. Today, <laughs> yes, amazing. I real quick before I go, because work would kill me. We just saw the Dune trailer, oh, uh, okay. and I, I just want to know if you can like tell me what are you most excited about. I, I haven't seen it. I, I, I think it's gonna be a, a, a very good movie. I, I mean, it's tell us be... how it ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me the scoop. Thank you both so much. So thank much. You. It was lovely to meet you. You too. It's great to meet you. I loved the movie. Thank, yeah, it's, thank you. Uh, I grew up in Little Mermaid, I'm, of course, you know, and. Uh, I really loved the new songs. I was excited about them. I really liked that Eric got an "I Want" song. Uh, what? 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 How did you decide what is getting new? What? What is inserted in here for new parts? We all got together and looked. There was a original a treatment that David McGee had worked on with, with Rob and John. And then when, we, when I was finally brought in to see all that, we had meetings and Lynn came in, and we looked at where the existing songs were going to be, and then simply plotted out. The other song one was one was yes one one for Prince Eric, um, and this is one where he's 
yes, he's l longing to find this girl who saved his life, but also he had this longing for the sea, a passion for the sea, <clears throat> and his uncharted waters where he's going you know, with his life. And that became, if you look here, the, uh, the score, it's, it's all through the score, that the thematic material from that song. And then there's the moment which, when Ariel is first on land and, and reacting to each, each of the things as she, as she, and she can't speak, so she's singing, in, but in her head. And all these, she's all excitement about this and wonder about that. And then the last thing is heartbreak when she, she, the prince comes in and because she can't speak, he assumes, oh, she can't be the girl. And so for the first time, she's heartbroken. Um, <clears throat> and then the third one is the scuttlebutt. Yeah. <laughs> which was just going to be this little throwaway song. And I gave Lynn the, just a lilting Caribbean piece of music, and then he rapped over it and was just, oh, my God, how perfect is that? My theater cheered for that one. They loved it. And so we've heard what a, a Lin-Manuel flair on an Alan Menken would sound like. What do you think, what would an Alan spin be on a Lin show? Like, what's Alan Menken's Hamilton? <laughs> Alan Menken's Hamilton? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, probably you've heard them all. I mean, <laughs> the, um, so the... The song that was most in, in my wheelhouse is Wild Uncharted Waters, mm -hmm. where Lynn was very insecure about finding the right lyrics because he felt he was trying to step into Howard's shoes on a song like that. So we both, you know, had to walk into each other's world. Mm -hmm. We were both part of each oh. other's worlds. Walk into that one. Yeah. <laughs> but so on the opposite end, we have these new songs. Daughters of Triton, though, it, it was cut. The, um, yeah, what, so I was just trying. Yeah, what was the thought process there? <clears throat> I, th uh, I think the thought process was just a we didn't need it in this particular version, mm -hmm. and we and definitely wanted the film to start with a much more of a live action um, feel of the ocean and meeting Ariel, and then we wait a little bit, make you wait until we get to part of your world, and I think that was you know that's an amazing choice because. Um, it, it just builds the power and anticipation. And part of that is also knowing you're adapting something that's already beloved. So you want to say, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, and here it is. And when it comes, God. It's beautiful. She nailed it. it oh, my God. Especially if, you know, you see it on a big screen. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Insane. Yes. Talk about cheering. And uh, switching gears a little, there's been rumors for so long. Are we, <clears throat> is the Hunchback movie coming? Are we going to get that? I have no idea. <laughs> no. It's a tough one because, yeah. because the Hunchback movie, Hunchback story involves a lot of real, real issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. That are important issues. And should be explored, should be discussed, and there has to be a an agreement about how we deal with those issues. You know, do we should we do a hunchback without without uh, hellfire? I, I don't think so. Yeah, no. So, but there's so it's it sits in this limbo right now. That, and, but the Hercules movie is apparently underway, and I've got some inklings of what's going on, but just some and. I've been more involved with the Broadway show of, of Hercules, which is coming, and uh, it's really exciting. I can't think of any from that era that I would rather see than Hercules come yeah. to life, so I'm so excited. I, I'm such a fan of all your work. It was, thank you. This is amazing. I love the movie. But thank you. Yes. Thank you. Everyone having a good time? Yes. yes. The movie was great. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. And you guys are the iconic animals, <laughs> of course. You're, uh, did any of you do mocap for this? Were you on set at no, all? No, but we were on set, mm -hmm. but no mocap. They filmed yeah. our faces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. faces. Yeah. Interesting. And you all have history with animation. You've all done that before. But I feel like with a role like this, your characters aren't as animated because they're you know they're realistic. Did that mm -hmm. alter any of your uh, performance as a voice actor? Did it change anything for you? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think I don't yeah. think so. I feel like we were just because like, yeah, they just like pretty much filmed their faces and they implemented that. Mm -hmm. And um, it was pretty cool though because when we were filming, we were like rehearsing and they had like puppets. Like for example, there was a flounder that was like connected by uh, hinges and so they could kind of imitate swimming. 
So it's pretty cool to kind of kind of see that and then think about that when you're doing your performance, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And David, you you sing two of the most iconic Disney songs of like all time mm-hmm. in this movie. Did you was that exciting for you? Was there pressure at all? Uh, I was very scared at, at first mm-hmm. before we actually started working on it. And once we started working on it, everybody made it so comfortable and just like yeah, it ended up just being entirely fun. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as we finished, I was terrified. <laughs> 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 and you, you all are a part of Kiss the Girl. Uh, Jake, do you sing in no. this one? No. Oh, no, sorry. I do sing it, yeah. but I don't, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do. yeah. All right. Sing it. That voice is you, so you're kind of all bonded forever now. Yeah, pretty much. With this song. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and my screening last night, there were two times during the movie where everyone cheered. One was obviously part of your world. Right. Uh, but the other was Scuttlebutt. Uh, the, the audience went crazy they, for Scuttlebutt. They did? Yeah, they did. Uh, they cool. did. And so, you know, you're no stranger to a Lin-Manuel rap. Mm-hmm. How is this for you, getting to perform this part, this new song? Oh man, it was it was such an honor, because I didn't even know Scuttle would have a song, mm-hmm. and then I was surprised with that with that gift, and then also Lin, Lin is an incredible songwriter, so it was so cool to have perform something like that. Yes. Um, with, with the help of David, obviously. Mm-hmm. He's a, Amazing. And I'm switching gears a little. Because I'm from comicbook.com, I can't sit in front of you and not ask you if uh, you know when we might be seeing Katie again in the MCU, if you know anything about Shang-Chi 2. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, 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 I don't. I don't know, I don't know anything, but I hope, I hope that I'm in it, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> and I'll stay on that track for a minute, uh, because, Jacob, you are known, you've worked with some big Marvel stars. The world was introduced to you, you know, alongside Brie. Mm-hmm. Do you right. would do you have any like dream superhero roles? Dream superhero roles? Um, no, not really. I've never really. I mean, obviously, like I know Robert Pattinson's now playing Batman, but like that's always been a dream of mine to be a Batman. But yeah. well, hey, I mean, there's been like six already. Right. So right. There's there's plenty of future for you. Yeah. I think. Um, and do you guys? Uh, so you've been talking about this movie all day. Uh, for for this production, for all this, for you, is there anything that you haven't gotten to talk about in terms of making this movie? Is there any like unsung hero of this production for you? Honestly, all the men and women that I, I, I that we didn't see, I think, um, because you know the, the way that we came into it, we we recorded, we we bonded, we. Um, but even during that whole process, everything was set up in this way that really supported Rob's vision. And then seeing it yesterday in, in all its glory, you know that that uh, there was so much hard work put into it. So I, I yeah, I, I want to thank them and congratulate them. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, and finally, you know, I'm a Disney Renaissance kid, so you know, I grew up with Little Mermaid, and so I was so I was just so excited that it was so good. Uh, do you do you each have a favorite Disney song in the history that's not from Little Mermaid? Oh, uh, because well, uh, like unbiasedly, like Under the Sea would probably be my favorite. But other than Little Mermaid, I would say it's tricky. Um, I really like. Um, I would have to say I. Um, what's the one in, um, um, going, or no, Dig a Little Deeper in Princess and the Frog. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 that's a good I one. That. I that one's, Princess that and one's the Frog. really good. Yeah. But you got there. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I like You'll Be in My Heart. Oh. Mm-hmm. That was a good, and, and um, Reflection. Like yeah, one. of course. Mm-hmm. Classic. I'm a big, I'm a big, everybody wants to be a cat. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I want to start with with Halle Bailey, like I just, she's just knocked it out of the park. And for you, uh, as a director, you're directing someone with all this talent, but her first starring role. Mm. How was that for you? Well, you know, she was like a sponge. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, she'd never done this before, and she shared with me later, which I wasn't aware of, that she was so scared oh. every day. But I never felt that from her. She seemed as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> but she was soaking everything in, and everything that I would say or John DeLuca would say, she absorbed so quickly and would just do it. But she did it with taste. You know, that was that's what's interesting. She understood camera and film immediately, and I thought that was sort of a natural, you could just see she's natural on camera. Truthful, but there's something, you know, you know, they say the camera loves you, or you know, the camera loves Hallie. They, it's just, there's something about her. And so I was, I, I was so excited to actually watch her grow into a film star as we were working. It was really an exciting journey. It's, it was great. She did so, it's great to watch. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was. And you know, you, you know, you've directed a lot of films. You're a seasoned director, but I feel like this is a lot different from things in the past because mm. of, you know, very CGI heavy, all this underwater stuff. Yes. Was this a challenge for you? Was it exciting? How did it feel? It was definitely daunting and a challenge. I mean, I, I, I as, as, as I started, I thought, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> but um, I have to say, if I hadn't done all my movies 
prior to this, I wouldn't have been really ready for this mm -hmm. one because it was so complicated. I mean, everything had to be choreographed in advance so that we could actually take all of that information and, and give it to our stunt team so they would understand how we're moving and, and you know, and how do you apply it. I mean, all of the underwater work was, was, was literally done on rigs, you know, like apparatus, like wires, and sometimes in one scene, you know, many times in one scene, they'd say two lines, I'd say cut, and we'd put on another apparatus for a couple more lines. It was all done in little pieces like a mosaic for even just one scene. So, and everything's added. So you have water being added, you have the backgrounds and fish and, and all the vegetation being added, but then you also have hair, like every strand of hair being added. I mean, that's what was happening. And also, you know, of course, their tails and, 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 and their costumes. A lot of the costumes were all, I mean, they're all designed. Everything was designed, and so, but, but it had to be digitally added. Wow, I, I want to say especially Ursula was one. I think my favorite look of any of these movies. Like she, stunning the way that that looked. Isn't that crazy? I mean, you know, it's interesting. In the first scene when you meet her, you're just seeing pieces. You're just like a little tease, like her eyes, a little sort of reflection. You're not seeing much of her all kind of. But then the second time you see her, you know, you see the full octopus. She's like really a, a, an octopus, and it's like wow, it's exciting to see. And she really. You know, the great thing about Melissa in this role, she's fearless and so physical. So having her slide down the clamshell and do all of that kind of thing, you know, or, or, or you know, lunge or leap or dive, she did all of that. It was really thrilling. And I, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm a big Little Mermaid fan. You know, I'm a redhead who collects things. Oh, I relate I to Ariel. <laughs> and, uh, and so I know the cartoon really well. And I thought you did a great job of sticking true to the story while adding uh, everything that was added. Nothing felt like it shouldn't be there. It was all flowed nicely. Oh, and I'm looking, though, I'm like, okay, what's different? And the one thing I'm most curious about, the yes. biggest change, yes. which is a small change, yes. but it's uh, in the cartoon, Ursula's victims turn into those little sad yes. call-up guys. Yes. What, what was the thought behind not keeping that? Yeah, it was it was interesting. It was really I know this sounds crazy, but it was it was about where they were. Um, you know, it, it I wanted to go back to the Hans Christian Andersen where they're really these creatures are 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 outside of of her lair, not you know, and 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 um, it it just felt like one thing too much for them to be actual people because I don't know it was the it was it was the idea that that these plants would then turn into people it felt almost almost like an animation idea concept yeah. you know and and i didn't want i mean when you watch triton in the original turn into one of them it's comical mm -hmm. do you know what i mean yeah and 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 it was like in a live action there's that line you know there are things that work in animation there are just things that just don't work in live action and it was just that i it just felt like this this feels like one step too far it was that we'll cross that line into something that seems silly yeah. and so that's that's really why that's a great answer mm -hmm. glad I asked it <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so you know you obviously a musical mm. guy you love musicals uh, you've directed a lot of good ones uh, do you have any other are there like a, any more dream musicals that you'd like to direct it's so funny I've been you know that's what I'm actually now thinking about yeah. because like what's the next you know I mean I, I, I'll develop something I'm not sure what it will be but um, you know, it's interesting. Part of me wants to create an original musical. I did it with Mary Poppins Returns, um, and that was it was thrilling to be able to because what happens is you don't have to then translate something from stage. I mean, listen, the Little Mermaid one was created was created as a as a musical, animated musical, um, built for film. And so, part of me thinks maybe that's the way to go. You know, an original piece. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, and uh, this. Uh, I, I want to say uh, there is a cameo in the movie. I don't want to spoil who it is uh, in case people don't know, but uh, it choked me up. Uh, I, 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 you know, I, there is a fork pass off. Yes. That, um, and, uh, Symbolic. You, of course. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm curious how early on that you planned that moment. Well, um, I won't say the person's name, but that person is a very old friend. Mm -hmm. I directed this person um, many, many, many years ago. I think it may be in the either late 80s or early 90s. And um, 
it's just you know when you have a connection like that with someone that you really love and know um, it was it was seemed the right thing to do especially if it can be done in an elegant way that doesn't stick out that's not too like you know I don't want to step outside the piece at all but we found this kind of we had you know written this role before this person was cast in that little cameo so we thought oh that's kind of a perfect way to do it really simple and just having a friend, an old friend on set with us, then everybody was so excited, you know, to have that person there. I got chills. <laughs> 